data. Go get, go get a cup from over there. Oh. He's having issues with his coffee. That's a bad day. I see one or two stragglers coming in, so I'm just kind of chilling. How y'all doing? Good? I am alive and kicking. I woke up this morning. That means it's a good day. I'm feeling the end of the, the session like slump a little bit. Anyone else feeling that? Like you just want like the next couple of weeks to just be like done and like get to the new stuff? Yeah, I feel that too. Hey, you. I feel that. I was like, where's your buddy? And then I was like, oh, here he is. Okay. So I added a few um, links down here for this week. Here we've got a little Word tutorial. And then the next thing I put on there is another, a different tutorial that has really great um, sort of organization. So you can, it's like a quick guide. If there's something specific you're looking for in Word, you can go here and just look up like here. It says, okay, let's see how to um, adjust page margins and it comes up with just that topic because there's so much that you can do in Word it can get overwhelming so it's a really good resource to have for Word documents going forward so what I want to do I'm going to start my Word and primarily today we're going to go through Word and all of its um, options that it has and all of the tools that you can use in it hopefully you'll learn something new um, Maybe if we're lucky, you guys could teach me something. That'd be fun too. Um, but we're going to look at just text, how to format text, what it means, table of contents, auto table of contents, automatic bibliographies, stuff like that. So hopefully it should help you make your, what are you doing? Why are you grinning with your cupcake? Hopefully it'll, it'll help writing papers going forward easier. So I also wanted to say on Thursday, huh? What did I do now? I don't like this chair. I'm going to fall off of it one day. There's like no sides or anything. It's like a weird stool thing. Um, Thursday. So Ms. Newsom is going to, she is the English one comp teacher. She's going to be in here with us this Thursday and next Thursday. Um, we are going to be working on our life plans. So please take advantage of the both of us being here and being able to help you and work in smaller groups or one-on-one -on -one, um, about your life plans. Okay. Um, Mrs. Richardson also said that for those in her English comp that she was taking it as an assignment as well. I'm not sure about that, but take a look in your thing if you're in her English comp, the online. Um, so please, again, take advantage of this Thursday and next Thursday. We won't be taking attendance. It's just going to be a working session, like a lab session. It's one on one, one on, you know, a couple of people, whatever. Um, so I will be going through content questions and she's going to be doing more of the English side of it. So like formatting and grammar and punctuation and all of that lovely fun stuff um, to make sure that you can have a good life plan. Okay. If you're not an English comp, um, you can just worry about content more so than the grammar and punctuation, but you know, we'll still be here working on those two class times. Okay. So that should be plenty of time for you guys to definitely get it started if not finished within those two classes okay after next thursday you should just have a few things to clean up and we should be ready to go to hand in okay please don't wait till the last minute especially the weekend so i know it says it's due october 3rd october 3rd is a sunday just fyi i will not be helping with rough drafts on October 2nd or 3rd, okay? So if you don't get a hold of either myself or Ms. Newsom by like that Friday, you probably won't get a hold of us, okay? Please pay attention and be cognizant of that. Make your advisor meetings. Again, I know it says they're due the 3rd, but your advisor probably won't be here on the 3rd, okay? Sound good? Okay. 
So my voice kind of held out this morning. Not very well, but I tried my best. So hopefully it'll be better this session. So we're gonna look at Word today and we're gonna go through pretty much all of the tabs that we have up here and what's available to you. So the first thing we can do is on the home, this is probably the one that everyone is the most familiar with. You've got some um, bullet lists and some numbered lists and some um, like indented kind of uh, outline lists. I'm like, what's that word, outline? You've got the justified, the center, the left. You've got some fill. Here is really the large issue here that we weren't going to talk about. It's the text formatting itself. So if you want to use like the automatic table of contents, you need to be aware of what type of text you're using. So something over here like a heading one, a heading two, and normal, that is what the automatic table of contents is going to look at and put in that table of contents. So I can write some text. Okay, so I can actually highlight heading one and say I wanted a heading one, it automatically changes it. I can make a heading two, click on heading two and it will auto change it, okay? If you want to change, so say I want this to actually be black and not blue, okay? If I come up here to the heading bar and I right click, I can actually say update heading one to match the current text, okay? So I can do that. So now anytime I call it a heading one, it's gonna be black instead of blue. So you can modify these formats up here any way you want to. You can also select the modify and it's gonna give you something, you know, similar to what's on the bar with a formatting and a size, automatic, things like that. So you can change any of them. You can create your own style, okay? The nice thing about using the styles is that if you want to change, if you're using the styles and you want to change something, it will actually change that style anywhere you've used that style in your paper. So say you've typed it all out in normal text and it happens to be in like Arial and you want it in Times New Roman, just change it on the top bar to say Times New Roman and it'll change the whole document. Okay, so it's an easy way to make quick changes. There's also Find and a find and replace, which is always a good tool to have. So if you have mistyped a number or a name has changed, you can find that name anywhere in the document. But like I said, this is usually what everyone knows about. Next, what you can do is on the insert tab, you can do certain things like insert, I'm gonna come halfway down here. You can insert headers. The header is gonna appear on every single page within that section. Okay, you can change sections so that multiple pages will have different headers. I can also close it. Let's see, I can insert a page break. So if it's a second page and see the header stays the same. I can add footers and I can also modify if I want to. Okay, up here there's a few different things. I can add a page number if I want to. I can add it in the Margins, I can add it to the top or the bottom. Okay, I can also put some auto text. I can switch between the header and the footer. Oops, here. I can go between sections with previous and next. I can have a different first page. I can have different odds and evens. Um, and I can also specify the margins. And then I can close it out and it go back. So every time I have a new page, it's gonna go ahead and put that header and footer on every single page. If I use the page numbers on that, it will automatically update page numbers. So if you need to insert something and it creates a new page, all of the numbers behind it will fall in line. So it's nice to do the automatic versus by hand. Okay. Let's go back to insert. Okay. Uh, one thing I like to use on the home before I forget is this paragraph button here. God bless you. So what it, that's going to do is it's actually going to show you hidden characters, okay? So a lot of times if you have some weird spaces going on or some strange spacing, see how it actually showed the paragraphs and it's actually showing the word page break, okay? That's what that's gonna show, okay?
Okay, so it's gonna show you all of those things that you wouldn't normally see, okay? Insert, let's see, let's go down here. Here you can insert um, tables, okay? You can insert tables in a few different ways. If you know how many rows and columns you want, you can click on those little boxes. Let's do a three by three, three by three, okay? When you do put a table, you actually get some additional choices up here under table tools for design. One of the nice things I like are here. It will actually give a nice look to your table, more professional look. If you want to add columns, you can go wherever you want to add them and the little plus sign will show up and you can add columns. You can add rows in two different ways. If you tab through and you get to the end, if you hit a tab, it'll automatically put a new row. Or if you come over here on the side and you hit some pluses, you can actually insert rows at different locations, okay? So you don't have to cut and paste and move everything down. You can actually just insert that. Some other things you can do on a row, if I highlight two cells, I right click. I can insert columns to the left or the right, okay? I can insert rows above and below. I can delete. I can actually merge. So merge just takes those two cells and makes it one. I can also merge going sideways on a row by hitting merge. And there you can see I have got the merge cells. Okay, let's see, let's go back to my table. So there's also some things in here available like shading, color, border styles. Do you want double row? Do you want two lines? Do you want a different color? Um, so here I can actually change it to be orange and make that line orange and that one. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I can. That is nice if you're trying to highlight something, like if you're putting totals at the bottom, you can actually outline the whole box in red or something to that effect to bring your eye to it. The other thing we have is layout up here. You can also do everything that you can do with a right click, with insert above, right and left. You can also split cells. So if I come in here and I decide I don't want them merged anymore, I can hit split and it will ask me how many columns and how many rows I want. So let's make that one with two rows and it puts it back to where it was, okay? You can also distribute rows and columns. So if I make some of these, some strange sizes, come on, there we go. I can actually highlight the table and say distribute columns and it'll take those columns and actually give you equal amounts of space in each column. Does do little wonky things with the merge cells because see, it gives me four even instead of the five, but it's available. The next thing over is how you want your text displayed. So you can have upper, middle, lower, and then right, center, left. I mean, left, center, right, sorry. So if I want to center, center, I can do it like that. I can also change my text direction in my table. So if I want one of those tables where the text is going kind of sideways, I can do that as well with this text direction. I can also change the cell margins. I can sort just like you can in Excel. And the other thing you can do, if I come down to the cells, you can actually add a formula as if you were in Excel. So you can say sum up all of the numbers in this column, okay? It does basic formulas, not anything too crazy, but it will do a basic formula for you. Okay, so let's go back to insert. Let's go up here. You can also insert pictures, shapes, and icons. So if I click on online pictures, the nice thing about online pictures is that they are all free to use. Um, you can use the Creative Commons. So let's pull up any of the free subjects, let's pick a picture and it will insert the picture automatically. Again, with pictures, it adds an additional tab at the top to give you some additional um, things to do with picture in particular. So I can make it an oval if I would like. I can make it have a big black border. I can make it look kind of wonky. I can make it look kind of fuzzy on the edges. Okay, so I can format that picture in any way that I want. Okay. 
You can also position this picture in different ways. So where, where you want the text to go around it and the text wrap. So you can put it behind text, in front of text. I hit it behind text. It's, well, I didn't go there. There we go. See, it's, it's going, see how it's going behind where it says heading to? I can also tell it to go in front of the text. And if I put it in front, it doesn't, it hides the text itself. Okay. Some of the other things you can do is you can remove the background of the picture, which makes it a little weird. See how it took it out? If I say keep the changes, it actually removes what it thinks is background. You can do artistic effects, okay? So I can make it black and white. I can make it colored. I can do a lot with pictures, okay? Another thing I can do is I can rotate the picture and I can crop it or I can give it a specific height, okay? You're working on a pic on a paper and you want to keep all of your figures say you know around three inches you can actually just say hey i want it three inches high and it'll automatically make it the size that you need okay here we've got some things 3d models icons are nice um sometimes if you want to put an icon out there um, either for a table or for a section. If there's a lot of built-in icons that it all has already in it. The other thing is smart art, okay? These are gonna give you a much fancier way of doing lists and processes. See, we've got lists, you can do any of these. You can do a process, you can do a cycle, a hierarchy. Um, so if you wanna do like an organizational chart type of thing, you can actually insert that and it'll already be formatted, okay? You can actually do a screenshot directly from Word by this choice over here, screen clipping. You can actually also add a chart, just like you can in Excel. So you can add a bar chart or a pie graph or like a scatter plot, okay? You can add online videos. You can actually create links. So say if I have the word heading, and say I want that heading to take you to a specific website, I can do that. So here you can link it to an existing web page, a place within the document, or an email address. Those are typically the three that you use. So if you say something like see Appendix A, you can actually link Appendix A to the place in the document that is Appendix A. But I can type a web address right there and hit OK. It does the blue online or the blue underline and it makes it a hyperlink. The nice thing about doing hyperlinks in this way is if you do print to a PDF, it keeps those hyperlinks intact. You can go to them in the PDF version. Okay. We did header, footer, number. You can add text box. You can add quick text. So here, say, I can add something about the document. So I can add a company name. Okay. I can add a signature line, okay? So I can do something like that, okay? So if you're doing a document that requires signatures, you can just go ahead and insert a signature line, okay? You can also insert other objects. We have equations and symbols, okay? Under draw, you can actually draw on it. So say I want to take a picture and say, hey, I want you to concentrate on this location. I can use the red pencil and make a circle. Under design, we've got different themes that you can work with, colors, fonts. You can add a watermark, okay? Watermarks are good if you're in the draft phase. You can have it say draft in a watermark. And that way you know that that's not the final version of it. You know that it's still in work, okay? Page colors, page borders, you can do all kinds of things with pages. The layout tab is where you're going to change the margin. The typical margin that it comes up with is a one inch on all four sides. You can narrow it, you can make it broader. Sometimes if you're going to bind your document, you might want to leave the left margin a little bit wider. Um, than the other ones. So that's something you can do. Orientation is also portrait or landscape. And that's gonna apply to the whole section. 
okay? You can change the size. So say you're working with like an A4 instead of an eight and a half by 11, you can change that. And then here we have some different types of breaks. At the top are just our normal breaks, page breaks, column breaks, text wrapping, okay? At the bottom is where we have the section breaks. Now, remember I said with sections, the entire section is gonna have the same header and the same footer. So say you have chapter one of your document that you want to have a specific header. And then in chapter two, you want a different header. You would actually need to do a continuous, or um, I'm sorry, a next page section break so that you can change that header or footer, okay? Let's see what else. We have line numbers. Line numbers are good in papers if you're putting a very large quote of some sort that might be multiple lines. You can refer back to the quote on page two, line three, okay? It's gonna give you additional options for that. And then the other thing is hyphenation. I don't know, I don't like using hyphenation, so mine's usually always off. Here you've got your typical indents and your typical spacings before and after. Now the next one is references. References is the big one. So here I can say, let's say, let's insert a blank page before heading, okay? So I just insert a blank page. I can actually, for insert, I can actually insert a cover if I want to, okay? But there's my blank page. Let's go back to references. I can add a table of contents automatically. Now, the only way that will work is if you use the heading one and two that are in that style from the home screen. But I can go ahead and say, I want to do an automatic table of contents. Okay. Anytime anything is changed within the document, it's going to go ahead and update this as soon as you click on it. You can click on this, say update table. You can also right click and say update field. You can update page numbers only, or you can update the whole table. So if the titles haven't changed, it'll update just the page numbers, or you can update the entire table document. Okay. You can add text. You can also change the text. So if I say custom and say, I don't want all three, I only want two, I can do that. I can add it up to five. I can put as many levels as I want. Okay, let's go back here to where my stuff is. The other thing I can do is I can actually insert a footnote. When I insert a footnote, it's automatically gonna put the little numer numerical number, that's not a thing, the little number at the bottom with a line where I can type the footnote. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to put the little superscript wherever my cursor was, okay? So you click insert footnote and then you just have to add the footnote at the bottom. You can insert an end note, which is at the very end of the document as a whole, not at the page. You can go between the footnotes and you can show them. Now, one of the other things that is useful for students is the citation and the automatic bibliography, okay? I will say, use it with a grain of salt. Make sure you review it once it's inserted because you wanna make sure it's correct, okay? Here, I can choose any style I want. So I can choose APA, I can choose um, Turabian, I can choose MLA, or it's gonna give me the correct format. So I'm gonna choose MLA. I'm going to go to my sources. So I've got two books in there that I actually created for the first class. So I can go ahead and say, I want a new book. I'm gonna make this a journal article. I've got an author, a journal and a year. Okay, and I can say, okay. So it's added the sources to the source list. Now, if I wanna add that source to this document, I go over here and I hit copy, okay? So I can actually copy all of them into here. The other thing it's gonna show you is if you go to the source down here at the bottom, it gives you a preview of what the in-text citation and the bibliography entry are going to look like, okay? So here you can see this, I made this a journal article. 
the citation is just the last name in parentheses, but in the bibliography, it has the name, it has the journal title, the journal it's in, um, italicized, the year in parentheses, and the pages. Here, for example, I made this one a book, so it's slightly different, but it's gonna do it automatically. Again, do it with a grain of salt and make sure that you double check what it's putting in. I can close that. If I want to add a citation, I can click on insert citation. It's going to bring up everything I have available in that citation list, or it's gonna allow me, I can actually add a new source right from here. So let's insert that one. And it goes ahead and puts the in-text citation in there directly, okay? Let's, I have so much stuff going on here. Let's put a few more citations in here. And I'm just gonna put this other one here. Okay. Now, if I go to the end, let's insert a new page. We're gonna make it a clean page. So under references, here I can insert a bibliography. It can be titled in three different ways, either works cited, references, or bibliography. Let's go to references. And it automatically put those three references that I copied into the bibliography here at the end, okay? Again, make sure you review what it does put in there to make sure that it is in the proper format, okay? The other thing you can do, so you can caption your figures and your tables. So let's move this sucker down here. I can either right clip and insert caption or right here on the references, I can say insert caption, okay? The caption is gonna be those automatic titles that appear next to tables, figures, or equations, okay? So for this one, it says I can label it, a pull down of an equation, a figure, or a table. So it's a figure. I can give it a name. I can also select whether I want it above or below, okay? So I'm gonna put the figure below and I can click OK. It'll automatically number them sequentially, one, two, three, four, five. So again, if you go back and insert a picture and put a caption in, it'll renumber everything to match. You can also do it with the table. So if I click the table and I say insert caption, change my label to say table, give it a name. I'm gonna put the table above and I click okay. And that title of the table and the table number appears at the top. Bless you. Okay. If I use that captioning system, what I can do then is I can actually insert a table. Okay. I can do a table of figures. Okay. I can do a table of tables. Okay. So I can actually have that all done automatically. And again, even if you have to go back and insert things in between these, you can update all of these tables automatically without actually having to pay a whole lot of attention to it, okay? It also allows you to create envelopes and labels, which we don't use a whole lot of. The review is always good because you've got your spelling and grammar check here. Hmm, apparently I spelled everything correctly for this one. There's a thesaurus, okay? So it can give you some synonyms, that's a word right now. Let's see, let's see if there's a synonym. Let's see if there's a synonym for my name. Thesaurus, okay? You highlight the word and click thesaurus. It can give you some other options. You can also do your word count, okay? Include text boxes, footnotes, and, and notes, okay? You can have it read aloud to you what you have typed out, okay? Sometimes when you read things aloud, you'll find some issues that you didn't have before. You can translate it into different languages. You can translate a section or the entire document. You can also change the language. Here, here we go. So language preferences. We did track changes yesterday. Um, so that's how you do a lot of um, editing and some markups. And then last but not least, you have view. And on view, you can do things like see the different layouts. 
You can add the ruler or remove the ruler to the top and the side. You can get different windows. You can add macros, whatever you would like. Okay. Does anyone have any other tips or tricks for Word? No? I know. You guys probably know more than me. It's fine. It's all great. Okay. On the info tab, you can do things like you can protect your document. You can add security to it to make sure no one makes any changes. You can inspect it for issues or you can manage it. Some different things you can do also is it can show you the size of the file. I haven't saved it this one yet, so it's not there. How long you've edited it, edited it, how many pages, how many words. You can add a title, you can add a tag or comments, okay? The other thing you can do is you could add authors down here. You can also add categories, status, company. Remember I had insert company and it said Piedmont International? That's where it's pulling it from, you can change that. Okay, so some of these things are kind of nice with the properties. Okay, if you have any options that you want to change, it's in the file. There's some display things like allow, um, always show these options. Um, so say I always want to see spaces as dots and not as just blank, I can do that. For proofing, I can do things like ignore uppercase. I can select the dictionary that I want. I can say whether I want grammar or grammar and refinements, okay? There's also some more in advance. There's also customize your tool ribbon, okay? Depending on what you're doing, you may want to hide or show some of these tabs. The developer tab is one that's usually not always shown. So if I click on that, it does pop up right here as developer, okay? In the developer tab, you can do things like create forms. You can insert checkboxes. You can insert um, text. You can have pull down menus. You can have a text box. Okay, so those are the type of things that you can do with that developer mode. But like I said, that one is usually hidden. If you're finding you're not using something, you can go ahead and hide it, okay? So customize the tool ribbon. Another way to do it is to right click on the tool ribbon, customize. Say you're not ever using mailings, you can turn it off. When I click okay, the mailings tab is gone from the top, okay? So if you're not using it, you can hide it. If you wanted to use it, you can view it again. Some of the other things over here on the navigation, this will actually populate as sort of an outline version of your headings that you have. So you can jump to different locations. So if I click over here on references, it automatically takes me to the reference page. If I click on heading one, it automatically takes me to heading one. So if you have a very, very large document and you want to go to specific sections, you can use that navigation pane on the left. Pages is just gonna show you a page by page of what it, what's on it and results is typically when you use the search, okay? So say you think, I need to find that table, I don't know what page it's on, you can very quickly go to pages and say, oh, there's my table, I click on that page and it takes you directly to that location. Okay, so it's a little bit easier way of navigating around. Again, this is all dependent on using these formats that are up there and built in that you can modify. A lot of times what you will do is you might create an MLA template out of this with all the formats matching MLA, and then just open that every time you wanna write an MLA paper. Um, I, I have one for APA that I use all the time and it's automatically set. Okay. There's of course always the help with some training and some help questions that are there. Um, up here, you actually have choices to do your undo and your redo and you've got your save as, okay? Questions, comments, concerns. You guys are always so quiet. I can't ever tell like, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Questions, questions, questions. Okay, does anyone else have any other tips or tricks for Word? Did you learn anything new? 
few things. Okay, cool. I'll take it. Baby victories. I'll take it. Okay, it's a very powerful tool um, to use. You know, uh, a lot of industries and businesses use it for all for everything that they do. So it has to be able to accommodate everything from you know a middle school project up through like an industry standard project. Okay, if you don't know, ask questions. There's tutorials. Tomorrow we're going to go through um, some of the steps of Excel like we did today. Don't forget Thursday. Your life plan. Okay. Bring something in to start, and we'll be working on that. Sound good? Okay, y'all. Have a good one. See you tomorrow.